Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. Welcome to part three of working on my Avatar Grove. This forest is designed to look like the full-size Avatar Grove near Port Renfrew in British Columbia, Canada. In parts one and two of this series, I was working on the trees, the main tree and all the trees that surround it in the forest, and today I'll be working on the landscape. Since my last video on the Avatar Grove, I've had a lot of damage in the moss. Squirrels and birds picking in it, kicking the moss off. You can see there's some plates of it are loose here where they've dug underneath. Yeah, so I'll have to readjust it all, replant some of the moss. I'm going to start the cleanup on the forest floor by using my tweezers and I'll pick out debris that's fallen down, old foliage, pine needles that have blown in from nearby trees. And I can pick out the liverwort. I can pick out the plates like that. While I'm doing the cleanup on the forest floor, I'll be thinking about what I want this landscape to look like. What textures I want, how much moss I want, do I want trails, pathways, rocks, and all that kind of thing. So I, I just want to think about the overall design while I'm cleaning it up. I'll take this big clump of moss off here and we'll replant it if I want it. I'll get rid of this patch of liverwort here. I never had liverwort in any of my bonsai pots until about maybe two or three years ago. Yeah, I don't know why it grows so much in it. Maybe I imported the spores in somehow to this area. I don't know. But if I keep picking away at it, it should, should go away. As I'm working away cleaning up my avatar grove, I'm getting rained on by pine needles that are dropping from the tree above here. Yeah, they're really coming down. You can see them landing everywhere. So I don't know. I feel like I'm, you know, making two steps forward and one step backwards with the cleanup. Creating a nice landscape on a bonsai tree can take a long time. So I would give yourself, you know, an entire afternoon to work on your forest, cleaning it up and getting all the, you know, all the little details looking right. It's not something that can be rushed you know, in half an hour or an hour. It's something that takes time to get all the little details right. To get everything looking miniature and everything working together as a whole. The trees, the composition, the forest, the pot, everything. If you remember Tom, he sent me the baobab seeds. He sent me that black bear that's in my bayberry forest. And he sent me this really cool Tronosaurus rex just recently. He sent me some other stuff. I'll show you that too. Here's some of the cool stuff he sent me. He sent me a bonsai zone hat, which is really cool. A bonsai zone t-shirt. Looks awesome. Some sphagnum moss. A nice package of that. That looks cool. And these pots he makes. He, uh, they're desk organizers. Drills a hole in the bottom. Puts a decorative uh, printing on the side of it. You've got a really nice bonsai pot. And the Tyrannosaurus Rex, of course. <laughs> Isn't that really cool? That'll be going in a forest somewhere. I've never met Tom in person, but he seems like a really nice guy. And he's just recently started his own YouTube channel. It's called Grow and Clip Bonsai for Seniors. I'll put the link in the description below. Alvaro from Brazil has also sent me a package and it's full of seeds from Brazil. All kinds of native trees. And he also sent me some pencil cactus cuttings, which I've got in the greenhouse. And hopefully they'll grow into something really nice. So thanks Alvaro. I've also got some seeds, some eucalyptus digilupa. digilupa. They're very, very tiny seeds as you can see. And I think those are the rainbow eucalyptus trees. And that's from Edwards Exotics in Thornhill, Ontario, Canada. So that's really cool. Tom has also sent me an elk and a grizzly bear. <laughs> I 
so we can make some good uh, North American scenes with those. That's really cool. I've got the grizzly bear up here by the Scots pine on top of a rock. It looks pretty cool. The elk is underneath the Manitoba maples. Kind of blends in well with the coloring. Placing figurines and animals at the base of your bonsai trees is a fun thing to do. It may not go to the bonsai shows with it like this, but uh, it's fun to do in your backyard. I've recently purchased, I don't know if you remember way back, I made this kind of planting out of my ponytail palm, the prisoner, and I finally found a little figurine, a skeleton of a pirate that I could put inside my ponytail palm. Sort of like he died in there, if you open the door. Now the only problem is, is that my ponytail palm, as it's been growing, this cave that I dug out of this room is starting to heal over really well. So there's no room for the pirate anymore. So I would have to either enlarge the hole again and put my gate across, or I could, uh, you know, cut off the diorama around this little pirate figure, simplify it, make it smaller so it would fit in there. So that'll be coming up in a future episode in the winter time. We'll decide what we're going to do with this pirate trapped inside the ponytail palm. So now it's back to work on my avatar grove. So I've, I've got the tree on the turntable. This is from Adrian Spinning Tree Bonsai Turntables. Great turntables. If you can spin a force this size with that much ease, that's fantastic. Get that out of there. That's that starweed. Don't want that spreading. There's also a seed. It looks like a sunflower seed or something that a squirrel or bird has dropped. Get that out of there. The moss on the back side is quite brown and that's because I had this side facing the sun in the summer. And that way it keeps the moss on this side nice and green and I wanted light to get to all those back trees to grow them taller. Eventually all these trees at the back the root system will grow down and into the pot and it'll hold this wall in place really really well. So. At the moment, it's kind of a moss wall holding it all together, but eventually it'll be all tree roots. So my next step, I'll want to clean up all the moss around the base of the trees. If they have surface roots, I want to be able to see them, and I don't want them hidden with moss growing up the trunks. So you can see here, I don't know if that's just, that's just a loose ball of moss that got kicked off right from up here, I think. Yeah, so here's a tree that has moss growing all up around the base of the trunk. So I want to take away all that moss around the base of the tree so I can see the roots. And I just pick away the moss either with your fingers or tweezers. And that'll keep it in check for a little while. But it always grows back, so you just got to you know, do a little maintenance to your force every now and then. And it'll keep them in good shape. Forests are a lot of fun, but they also take a lot of maintenance. It's, you imagine how many trees are in here, and it's like having that many bonsai trees to take care of all in one pot. And it's not just the trees, it's the landscape too. So I never get tired of doing landscaping and trying to think of new ideas. That's the fun part. I'll place some moss in this pocket where the liverwort was piece together some clumps of moss to make a better looking base to the mountain here. So now I'm continuing to clean away moss from the base of the trunks of the trees. I'll start with the main tree I guess. And this kind of really nice moss you can plant it elsewhere in the planting. No sense wasting it. It's funny sometimes I go to bonsai shows and the people are fascinated by the moss. It's uh, 
they don't care about the trees they just like looking at the moss which is fine I, I love moss too it's uh it's fascinating little uh, plants moss and lichens they're I don't know they were just really cool if you like moss and moss plantings there's a YouTube channel Cherry Chi and she does a lot of really cool moss plantings and you know in containers growing all kinds of cool ideas and I'll leave the link to her channel in the description below and I think you'll really like it so I want getting into the details now I want the slope of the hill to be quite steep and you can see at the bottom there's a lot of moss that's built up here and I think there's some sticks and stuff that's kind of rolled down the mountainside so I want to continue the slope to go right to the edge of the pot so I'll be taking away some of this stuff at the bottom and I may be putting some of it back but just to get that slope restored digging away some of the soil at the front here and that'll make my hill look a little steeper so it doesn't come rounded at the bottom and continues to slope all the way to the edge of the pot. So I have some twigs and debris like this that I had placed over the forest floor to give it you know an authentic feeling. Uh, forest floors are often littered with branches and plants and all kinds of stuff. So yeah I may be placing some of this back once we've got all the basics of the planting in place. I'm just putting some of this moss back still. So there's another clump of the moss at the front here that I need to lift up, remove some of the soil, and get that slope of the terrain reestablished. There's a rock in there that was covered in moss. Moss will cover most things. I'm quite surprised sometimes when I'm digging around how much, <laughs> how many things get covered by moss. It's amazing. Probably one day I'll find one of my bears covered in moss, the grizzly bear or the brown bear, and I'll say, oh yeah, that's where they went. Got swallowed up by nature. Okay, so that is looking much better at the front now. I've got the slope coming all the way down. I've got, you know, a bit of a lip of the pot showing it's not all covered with moss mounding over it now originally I had a pathway coming through here down around the main tree and up here and kind of disappearing around the back again and it always looked good with that it um, it's nice to have kind of a a place to imagine walking along it's not necessary in a forest, but it sure invites you in. You can imagine a forest if it was all sticks and undercover and growth. You never picture yourself wanting to walk through it because it looks like a hostile environment. But if you have something pleasing with pathways or trails that you could walk on, it kind of draws you in and you say, oh, I'd really love to be there. So that's what we want to do. We want to create a place that invites you in in a place that you would want to be. You want to walk the trails and look up at the tall, grand old growth trees. So I'm just picking away, digging out debris still. I find, you know, the more you pick out, the more you notice little pieces. At first you're kind of overwhelmed. It's, there's the debris everywhere. But then you get into that place I call the bonsai zone, where it starts to become a real full-size world to you. And you start to notice details that are out of place. And it can be little things, like a, you know, a pine needle that's fallen down, or a little bit of foliage that's fallen down. It just looks out of place. And at first you don't notice it, but as you get the landscape more and more perfected, you start noticing everything that's not quite looking right. I place this stone here, two reasons. It kind of curves up, and I wanted to justify that curve in the tree. 
So I thought, well, if there was a bit of a rock slide, this rock's come down, hit this young sapling, and then not kind of knocked it sideways, and then it's kind of grown up around the rock. So that's the reason I have it here. And it also straightens the tree out a bit. I want it to be vertical now. So the weight of the rock kind of keeps it more vertical in the forest. I'm keeping all the items that I might want to put back into the forest, rocks and branches and moss, and I'll clean up the rest. And then we'll step back and take an overall look at the forest and decide what direction I'm going. Here's an overall view of the forest now. You'll notice on the left-hand side here, I have more trees out front. And this side, I have a big open plain here. And I'm not sure if I like that. Um, the idea was to stagger the trees from the lowest point, have more trees higher up on the hill and higher up on the hill, and then finally the top of the hill. So by having that open plain there, I don't really get those step trunks as it goes up the side of the hill. So I'm wondering if I need to plant more trees in that area, or do I need an open area there? You know, do I need some relief of the congestion of the forest to kind of have a spot to look into the forest? I'll have to decide. I've been looking at it carefully, and I think I do need something in this area. And I'm looking around for trees. I'll show you what I have. Over in this tub here, I have a cedar, and I believe it's from a cutting in here and it's been in here several years so it's either from a cutting or it was you know one a collected one that was accidentally collected a little seedling that was beside another tree so that's a possibility I have several cedars in pots again these were from seed so I've got two there I've got another one here and they're just small but they'll grow so that's three, four, including the one in the tub. I have some cedars in the elephant diorama. There's a young one over here that's nice and straight that would look good in the uh, forest. So that's another possibility. I've also got a group of seedlings here underneath my red maples. There's one, two, maybe five, maybe six of them in there. All young, but they'll grow. They could be good. And last but not least, I have a group of cedars underneath my elm here. I think there's three in there. So yeah, I've got plenty of young cedars that I could put in that avatar grove. I won't be planting any of the cedars in the avatar grove yet. I'll have to wait till spring when it's the right time for repotting. But I'm going to try it in spring. I'll add some cedars in there, kind of uh, see how it looks and if it doesn't look good, I'll just put them back in individual pots and continue growing them. You'll notice with the Thuja occidentalis, in fall, any of the weak branches will turn kind of a light tan color and they'll die off. So that branch probably wasn't getting enough light, so it's died off. There's some at the back here, if I rotate it around, there's some of these inner branches. They, you can just pick them off. And that just happens on these in fall. Anything not getting enough light. That one was shaded out, so it just dies off. Only the strong survive. And you can see that on all my cedars. I'll show you some more. Here's my large old growth cathedral style one. Um, there's a few branches on the inside that are kind of died off a bit. It's not too much on this tree, but yeah, there's a few on the inside here. And yeah, there's one right there, just weak. Not enough light, there's another one in here. And they just turn their fall colors and die. Uh, over in my clump style here, I've got some here. You can see those are gonna they just pull off, they're dead. There's more up here. Some up here. Yeah, so it's just something that happens in fall. You might lose all your weak branches. So it shows the importance of keeping all the branches you want to keep 
in the sunlight, keeping your tree prone to a reasonable degree. Otherwise, you'll start shading out branches and they'll die off and fall. You can even see this effect on the full-size cedars growing along the fence here. If you look in at the inner branch structure here, you can see all the fall colors of branches that have died off. Foliage, branches. They're just not getting light anymore as the trees go larger. I'll just go through the upper foliage here, pick out any of these dead branches or dead foliage. It'll help give light to all the branches that are living. Yeah, so there wasn't too much. There's just a little bit on some of the insides of the trees here. Basically, everything's looking pretty good on the forest. After I gave it a fairly severe pruning, so... You know, everything's still nice and green, which is a good sign. There's only a little bit of dieback on some of the inside branches here. So these trees, they're all ready to grow next spring again. And they're very hardy. You can overwinter these outdoors as long as they have a bit of wind protection. I bring mine in the basement for the coldest months of the winter, sort of uh, January and February. But other than that, they stay outside on the benches, and they seem to do quite well. All right, I think that's got most of that dead stuff cleaned out. Let's get back to landscaping now. I'm going to lay in the pathways next. So I like the idea of the one coming over the crest of the hill here and coming down, but it's not a very good area to have a pathway in the front because it's all sloped. So in the past I've kind of had it come down to the lip of the pot and along and then climbing back up, which looks pretty good. Um, I could even have the path disappear out the front of the planting and then, you know, reappear over on the left hand side and continue out of the frame. Maybe I'll try that. I can have the path coming up kind of wandering down to the edge of the pot and then another one coming up this side. So it kind of continue the path in your imagination, which is what we want to do in a forest is evoke the imagination. To create a sense of perspective in the pathway, I want the curves of the path to be tighter at the back and then they get a little looser as it comes towards the front. And that'll give a feeling of perspective. So I don't want the path kind of straight at the back. I want it kind of curving back and forth and then getting a little more gentle as it comes out front. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try and roughen the pathway, picking out the moss to establish where the path is, and then I'll put some kind of a ground cover on the pathways. Okay, so I'm looking from the front. The pathway definitely has to come here. And I, I like the idea of it coming down over here maybe down the front. So let's try that. We'll pick away the moss. Trying to establish sort of a meandering path, a zigzag pathway. And I'm kind of following the natural contours of the of the forest here. So I'm not... The, the paths are in a logical place. You know, you have to picture where would you climb this hill? And I would climb it kind of here, the go back and forth to make the slope more gentle. You always have to think miniature. Okay, so my path is going up through here and then I'll want another turn up the top of the hill here. And then towards the back here. And then it disappears. And I think that looks pretty good. I'm just Doing some final checks here. I think I need to come over here more. Also, these curves, they can start off quite tight and then get larger as you get to the front. And that'll also give a nice sense of perspective. Anything you can do to make your bonsai look larger and more miniature adds to the magical qualities of your planting. So, 
and the pathway should get larger as you get towards the front too so it starts narrow and then it gets wider and wider and that also gives a sense of perspective that's looking okay I need to curve it more here it's a little too like lightning I, I need to smooth out the curves a bit make it more flowing now my only complaint is it's a little too vertical I want it to kind of come more over here so maybe more moss taken away from here and add it over here will improve the look yeah I think that helps bringing it more over towards the center of the planting it's looking better still maybe a little zigzaggy now the next I've kind of I, I, I like that I think it's roughed in quite nicely maybe just a little more out front here I may end up continuing it up as I've done in the past um, it always looked good so my next thing right now it, it's kind of an even slope and it wouldn't be very easy to walk on so I need sort of steps or you know something in the pathway that makes it easier to walk around so you're not sliding down the hill so I'm going to kind of create some steps some natural changes of terrain that would make it easier for a person to walk down so that's kind of got a bit of a pathway established now the rains are coming today now I'm going to get some ground cover that to cover the path up uh, I've used in the past sand uh, you can get brown sand you can get white sand um, I find the brown sand looks best for a natural looking forest the lighter colored sands look better in a desert type planting so I think we'll start with the brown sand and see how that looks here's a close-up look at the pathway so you can see how it goes up you can see what it looks like from above how it gets wider towards the front <laughs> the curves are supposed to get tighter towards the back and maybe I'm not quite so good in that area but I think it'll look good it looks good from the front you can see the pathway so I'll get the sand now and we'll see how it looks with the sand in place the sands in the greenhouse and I thought I'll just show you all the beautiful flowers in the greenhouse so here we are so my yellow hibiscus has three beautiful flowers out today they're just beautiful my red or orange hibiscus has one out that's looking really fantastic there's more coming my bougainvillea my pink pixie bougainvillea is it's got a lot of flowers this is the most flowers it's ever had I can see there's one two three four five six seven another one coming eight nine so about nine clusters which is looking pretty good my crown of thorns is still flowering looks really nice and my sarissa is flowering with beautiful flowers yeah so there's lots of color in the greenhouse and my bags of sand are down down there I gotta dig those out that's what I came in here to do here's a quick update to my baobab seedlings while we're here really doing well my peperomias are just looking beautiful they're from Mexico and I've got them in a Mexican pot so I think it looks pretty cool it'll make a nice accent plant someday I've got the sand out of the greenhouse I just took a scoop of it so I'll use a spoon and I'll place it starting at the front here creating my pathways and this will just be roughing it in for now we're gonna add all kinds of interesting stuff along the pathway and again you can make your pathways very obvious or more on the subtle side so it all depends how you want your pathways to look if you want them to look very natural like they were made by animals or man-made pathways where they're you know a little more obvious or you can go somewhere in between 
I'm stepping back now, having a look at the pathway. Yeah, I think that's good. Let's um, start on the pathway for the left-hand side. On the left-hand side here, I'm looking for, you know, a natural place you would climb up this mountain. Um, and I don't have to go to the top, just somewhere maybe off and around to the side and out the back here. So, you know, I've got this rock here, which is fairly new, and that looks like a pretty good place to have my path come here, maybe drop down in front. So maybe I can kind of make a bit of a plateau here or an area that would be like a place you could step to climb here. Let's get rid of some of that moss. Kind of there, I'll take away this moss out front here. Like that. So it's going to climb back up here, kind of around this rock here, and then probably up through here. So I'm going to pull away some of this moss up in here, creating a pathway that disappears up through here and around the back I think so you can see it kind of climbs up here zigzags comes out and around the back and disappears somewhere so I'll add some sand into that I'll be watering the sand to make it more subtle and to blend in better so this is just kind of the first step of laying it out. Okay, and then it disappears around the back there. Okay, so that is the next step. We're going to get out the watering can and give the pathways a water. I'm hoping that you can see the difference the pathways make, that it turns a landscape into something like, I want to be there walking those trails. It just, it just invites you in, as I said, and, uh, yeah, I, I think it really, really helps to kind of give a, I don't know, a miniature feel to it all. I think, you know, pathways give a scale to the planting. All right, here I go with the water now. So I'll just do it from really high up, gentle stream. Kind of blend it in a bit. You can see the water flows down my pathway, so it kind of creates a natural pathway. So I think I chose quite well. I think it's looking quite good. The next thing I want to do to the landscape is add some moss bushes, similar to those that are in my larch forest. I've got that thick kind of shade moss that takes well to pruning. So I want to create some bushes in that back there. And I think that'll add another illusion of scale to this planting. If we fly in here to the larch forest, you can see some of the moss bushes in there. You can see the silhouette of them anyway. Yeah, so that's what I'm after. I'm getting a few drops of rain, and it is supposed to rain today. So if it starts raining too hard, I'll have to stop the video and continue on in part four. Um, I'll do as much as I can before it starts pouring today. So this might be part three, or it might continue on in part four. I'm looking at the forest now, trying to decide where would be some good places for bushes. And I'm thinking, I've got some good thick areas up top here that could be pruned away. I'll need to prune away some of the moss around these trees up here first. And maybe I'll leave the moss in between them and then develop those into kind of moss bushes. So. I'll do that. I'll start pruning away at the top here, creating a bit of a, a few moss bushes and see how it looks. To create the moss bushes, I use these curved surgical scissors. They work nice for making kind of rounded bushes and that. So I'll just come in and start getting a bit of separation between the clumps of moss. If you go into a natural forest and look at the ground cover on the forest floor, You'll notice a lot of it isn't green. I would say there's more areas that aren't green that are, you know, 
just plain soil or dead leaves or muddy spots then there is that are green and lush you know maybe in springtime the forest is all green and lush but generally especially these coniferous forests there's not a lot of greenery on the forest floor so by taking away moss and using it selectively you get a more realistic appearance to your to your forest So it's not all just lush green. It looks a little bit too much like a fantasy world if it's all lush green. Something out of a fairy tale maybe, rather than looking more to a forest in reality or real life. So I kind of like, there's this plateau behind the main tree here. And I kind of like the idea of this pathway continuing up onto that plateau. So. I'm going to clear the way there and add a bit of sand. Now this stick's sticking out a bit too far here. I'll just break that off like that. Yeah, so I think, you know, that would be a natural place people would go is climb up here and look down the hill or see the old tree. So let's add some sand in there. Join it with the main pathway here. Like that. Okay, I'll give that a watering just to blend it in a little better. Like that, and you can see it, the water flowed down my pathway. You'll notice that I have several varieties of moss in this planting. I've got this nice velvety green shade moss. I've got the thicker, coarser moss, the shade moss that looks more like ferns. And I got some moss that's kind of in between. Um, and they all kind of blend in nicely, nicely with each other. You know, there's not one that overpowers the other. Um, sometimes I see at bonsai shows, I see a bonsai tree and it has all these different varieties of moss and lichen at the base of the tree on the surface of the soil and it looks like a patchwork quilt it uh, you know there's these clumps of all these different kinds of varieties of moss and it looks it doesn't look good in my opinion it looks like they just patched it all together the night before and nothing really looks natural or blends in and there's no rhyme or reason why one patch of moss is this type and another is a another type you know you need you need uh, purpose like I've got shade moss in the shade and I've got this fine moss out in the sun and you can see this side of the planting gets more sun and it's got all this nice green moss deep in the shade of the forest you get less moss and so you've always got to think logically when you're uh, mossing up trees forests and trees is where would bushes normally grow naturally grow and where wouldn't it grow so for me, you know, it's all about creating that illusion of scale, that it's a miniature world, and the moss can really help you achieve your that feeling. If you do it poorly, it can have the opposite effect. It can distract the viewer. It brings them, uh, you know, takes them out of that fantasy world and brings them back to reality that, oh, this person just mossed their tree the night before, and it looks like it. Now, I'm not saying you can't moss it the night before. If you do, a, do it properly and a good job, it looks, it can look like the moss has been there for a hundred years. But you've just got to do it carefully. It's continuing to rain here. I think this forest has made a lot of progress today. I think it's gone from, you know, a dark overgrown forest to almost a fantastic miniature world now. That, you want to explore, find out more about it. So I'm not done yet. I have a lot of details to go. Rocks and more pruning of moss and, you know, especially in this area over here. So there's a lot of detail work to come that'll really polish this landscape up. So that'll be coming in part four of this video.
So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Because I sure had fun doing this. It's time now for today's updates. We'll start today's update with my Sarissa Fotida. You can see it's covered in pine needles, but the canopy is filling in really nicely. I'm still trying to keep that separation. I might have to go in and prune it again soon, but yeah, it's doing really well. My Schefflera here, the leaves are growing back in on it. You can see them up top. It's almost getting ready for photograph time, where it'll look its best when you get these little miniature leaves growing in like that. It'll look really awesome and maybe even, depending on the weather, probably, probably another week and it'll look its best, I think. That's all for today. I hope you join me in part four of detailing this Avatar Grove landscape. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for watching today in the Bonsai Zone.